And one thing that you've been talking quite a bit about is insights. Can you share a little bit more on what really are insights and how do you, how should we be thinking about insights? Absolutely. So when you think about an insight, an insight is a fundamental human truth about somebody um, and it usually goes unrecognized. So sometimes it's helpful to think about what an insight is not. So an insight is not something you'll ever hear in a focus group. It's not something that you think about someone that's not based on facts and data. It's not a piece of data. Um, and most likely, it's not something that you're just gonna see one day and go, oh, I got an insight. It takes like time and rigor to get to it. And so I like to think of insights visually because you know I'm such a visual person. Yeah. So if you think of an iceberg, Mm -hmm. So at the top of an iceberg, what you see is the top, but not what's underneath the water, right? So at the top, you're going to observe things, that behaviors that someone's doing. You're going to probably um, hear what they're saying, and you might even be able to get to what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. But what they really believe fundamentally and how they feel, you're not going to get to unless you ask the question why. Yeah. So the way to get to insight, honestly, is asking why and is digging deep. Another thing that happens a lot is people think, okay, so you ask why a bunch of times, mm -hmm. you take a bunch of data, you got an insight. Mm -hmm. And those are elements, but I always think there's five steps. So people would say, I don't have strong insights, so let's go get insight. Well, what do you want to be insightful <laughs> Just about? Just go get it. Go get it, exactly. <laughs> so I always frame it, Are you? Um, why are you looking at insight? Are you feeling like you're not connecting with your customer? Is Are you losing market share? So you want to almost frame why you're trying to get to insight okay. so that you know the data to collect. So the sense. second step is collect data. So if you don't, love <laughs> yeah, right? You love your data. <laughs> so it's quantitative, it's qualitative, it's observing. Um, you might not have it, so you have to go get it. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, observe your customer, ask questions, gather that all together. And you know that I love workshops. Yes. So the third step is to bring people together, and not a giant workshop, but an interactive people, workshop. An interactive <laughs> workshop, which I like with lots of post-it <laughs> notes and such. But but it really, it's about getting a diverse group of thinkers together mm -hmm. and to take that data and put it up on the wall and then look for common themes. So cluster. Okay. Yep. And yep. you'll usually come out with people say, oh great, then I get to an insight. No. <laughs> you get to observations, you get to understandings, but you're still not an insight. So the fourth step is to ask why. Mm -hmm. So you probably heard me talk about, about the five whys tool. Yes, yes. And mind mapping to get to why and digging under it. Yep. That's really important, but honestly, you don't know, you often get to the insight at like the third why. Mm -hmm. But the key is unpeel the onion, dig, dive into the water to see the base of the iceberg, like get underneath it by asking so, why. So keep going keep to going. verify that that's the why. Yeah, and what happens sometimes is you'll <laughs> actually realize when you've gone too far because then you don't get like anything deep out of it. Yeah. But it's a good exercise. Ask okay. why until you really come to something that truly um, explains um, why someone is acting or behaving the way they are. And then finally, the fifth thing is, you know, just when you've gotten to that insight doesn't mean that you've gotten it tight. You need to craft it. Mm. So an insight usually has um, kind of an observable um, aspect of it. So um, it's sort of what they believe or what they're doing. But then there's usually a but, a tension. Yes. So there's something that's getting in the way mm -hmm. that is stopping them from changing their behavior and doing what you are hoping that they'll do. So one of oh, my I favorite, like that last step. yeah, it's like right. <laughs> so one of my favorites, a couple like very universal insights. When you think about the "Like a Girl" campaign from Always, yes, that insight and that tension was that teenage girls really want to try new things, mm -hmm. but they're afraid of failing. Mm -hmm. So it's about learning about their failures and really um, empowering themselves to overcome the fear and to move on. So it's that, that. that but. The other yeah. thing is um, another universal insight that and sometimes insights can be used in different categories, right? So mm -hmm. there's an insight around um, women want to always kind of look and feel their best, mm -hmm. but they want it to be natural, not fabricated and model-like. Yes. Yeah. So two companies use that insight very effectively. One is Dove. Yes. And what is airy? Yeah. So two completely different categories using that kind of an insight. And then it's really compelling in their positioning and their innovation.
That's a really great example because I know when both of those came out, they were very different and unique and yep. did tap in. I know a lot of the people that I talked to, they were tapping into something that nobody had tapped in before. Yeah, and it's in you, like tapping in, they're tapping into an emotion, yes. right? And that's what a good insight has too. There's some deep emotion. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you, when you craft an insight is you usually want to do it in the first person, like I feel or I, and it, and it really like when they, when they see you, they're not, you're never going to take the insight and give it to them. Yeah. But the creative, the campaign, whatever it is, the, the advertising, um, strikes a nerve and connects with them because you really get them. Excellent.